ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us here on King Jordan Radio. The date is January 2nd, 2014. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of our favorite guests. He was the lead defense attorney for Michael Jackson in 2005. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Tom Mesero. Good evening, Tom, and Happy New Year to you. Hi, Jordan. Happy New Year, and Happy New Year to everyone who's listening. And uh, thank you again for inviting me to be on your show. It's a real honor. Absolutely. And uh, how was the New Year for you? It was wonderful. Uh, I'm up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm in the middle of a trial in Oakland, which is uh, near San Francisco. It's across the bay. And uh, everything was fine. Um, I think uh, the new year was a wonderful, wonderful, uh, you know, way to start uh, what I hope will be a very good 2014. And I hope it's good for everybody uh, who's listening and you too. Amen to that. Okay, I wanted to start uh, with uh, Conrad Murray. The uh, Conrad, uh, I don't know if you heard, he was recently on the Australia, Australian edition, and I believe you told me that uh, they pay over there, uh, and Conrad Murray uh, took an interview there. Well, I was told that Conrad Murray wanted to be paid for interviews. Uh, I was right. told that CNN had offered him the opportunity to be on uh, CNN, but he wouldn't do it unless he was paid, and that the Australian 60-minute really? show did pay him, and I believe a British uh, newspaper paid him as well. So that's what I was told. Let's take a listen to the clip, and uh, we'll come back on the other side, and uh, we'll take a, a rebut to this. I love Michael. I love Michael Jackson. I love him. Not quite how you'd expect a doctor to describe his relationship with a patient. Uh, how close was that relationship? Uh, I was his closest friend. You see, indeed I was Michael's doctor. But I spent more time with him as a friend than taking care of him medically. I love Michael. I will mourn his loss forever. I am so sad. That he's not here. When did you accept that Michael Jackson was dead? Oh, at the UCLA. UCLA. I can tell you, I tried the best I can. I was one man doing CPR, ventilating him with an ambu bag, and I did mouth to mouth resuscitation. But I wanted to help. Michael, wholeheartedly, I loved Michael. You shut down your practice basically to go and work exclusively for him. Did you do that for the money? Because you were you were in debt? Were you starstruck? Were you seduced by fame? Not at all. I've been Michael Jackson's doctor for three years before that time. I was not starstruck by Michael. If it was anything, I was so sympathetic to Michael because of the things I've learned about Michael, the things that he shared with me. I did not agree with Michael on using such a powerful sedative for sleep. So what I told Michael is that we have to get you off of that substance. However, I mean, call it ideal or non-ideal, Michael Jackson is not the guy you can just say, stop it. But it's not a treatment for insomnia. No matter what he said to you, no matter how he begged, no matter how hard it is that he is Michael Jackson asking you, the truth is, and it's the thing I don't, I don't know why you don't accept, is that you should never have given it to him. Ever. Michael Jackson had a lot of doctors who treated him with proper form. Conrad Murray was a doctor that treated Michael with Propofol, but with the intention of getting Michael to understand, 
I do not want you using the substance again. And I succeeded. You may not but, have but liked... But didn't succeed, though. Well, he me, died. Let me finish, let me finish. Maybe I'm not making this point very clear. Oh, I, I, I'm hearing you, but you're, yeah. you're not accepting that you thought you were doing the right thing by trying to get him off it, but still using it. Frankly, you should never have given it to him in the first place. Listen to me. If I want to blackmail Michael Jackson, it wouldn't take that phone call. It would be far worse than that. It would shatter the world. Okay? What do you mean by that? Well, that's what I said. When he said to me, if I don't go to rehearsal, I'm going to lose everything. I was already informed that Michael Jackson was over $40 million in the hole in climbing. When I saw how desperate he was, and I knew how much of a destitute he was, and what he was facing, if he did not do this, it all, again, fell in my heart. But you're not his accountant. You're his doctor. I am not his accountant. I'm not his accountant, but I'm just trying to tell you, when, you, when I put the whole situation together, I was very concerned for Michael. Murray gave in. And he says he gave Jackson a small amount of propofol. And when he considered it safe to do so, he left the room for a short time. What was that moment like when you walked into his room and saw he wasn't breathing? Oh, my God. It was, I was stunned in, in the sense. I mean, initially, you know, what happened here? What happened? Guilty. What happened saw Conrad Murray sentenced to four years jail. The coroner found that Michael Jackson died from acute intoxication of propofol mm -hmm. and that his body had enough propofol in it that would be equivalent to someone having major surgery. How did that get into his body? Well, <clears throat> this is this takes an education, and I mean, you know, it has a, 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 a simple, like, well, 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 very simple. Uh, you didn't put it there. I did not give it to him. Okay, so if you didn't put it there, who did? Michael. And again, I think the deputy coroner has pointed out that that is absolutely absurd. No, it's not. It would be almost impossible for him to come out of his sleep, inject the propofol, and be unconscious and indeed no longer breathing in the two minutes that you say you left the room.